Okay, so in this one, we're going to look at uh, Stokes' theorem, and we're going to verify it uh, by computing the circulation of this vector field right here, done moving around this curve right here. So uh, this curve is going to be a circle uh, at height 2 of radius 2. So let's see, so let's go up 1, 2. And whoop, well, there it is actually here. I'll make it a different color so that it shows up as the object of interest and we will be um, parameterizing it so that it goes in the standard uh, direction. So parameterize this way. Okay, so let's see. So first idea without using Stokes theorem, uh, we'll just parameterize the curve so I'll use the usual C of T is going to be 2 cosine T, 2 sine T, and then we're at height 2 the whole time. And so this will do as T goes from 0 to 2 pi. Um, and let's see. So then uh, if we set up the circulation integral of F dot DC, then we're going to have to substitute in all of these uh, functions, these these x, y, and z coordinates into f right here. And so substituting those in, we get, let's see, 4 cosine squared t minus 2 sine t, um, and then 8, and then uh, 4 cosine squared t, and that's going to be dotted with the derivative of ct, so that's going to be minus 2 sine t, 2 cosine t, and then uh, 0 dt. All right, so now working out the dot product, we get the integral of, uh, let's see, minus 8 cosine squared sine, and then plus 4 sine squared t, and then plus 16 cosine t, and then plus 0 dt. All right, and now we've just got some more or less some straightforward integrations to get rid of. The zero is toast. And actually, this guy is going to be zero as well because we're integrating cosine over um, its, its period interval from zero to two pi. So that one you know is going to end up canceling out. Um, <clears throat> and so let's see. So we get, uh, uh, we end up with four pi and I'll let you verify the details. And actually here, I'm gonna scoot this over so it's out of the way a little bit, because we got more work to do. So next, we're gonna take uh, a look at the same thing, but now using Stokes' theorem. So I'm going to make up a surface that has this as its boundary. So this curve um, is the boundary Um, and we're going to use the cone, the cone r equals z, and this is uh, for z between 0 and 2. So that's what I got in mind, right? So now we're going to be just integrating over this. Uh, All right, did my little sketch it a cone. Okay, so um, let's see. So we're going to need a parameterization of the cone. Um, and so let's see. So I'm going to take my sigma. I'll do this as r and theta. And then I can think, you know, hey, if I've got some little, uh, you know, some point that's out here at angle theta and distance r, then how high do I go up? Well, I'm going to go r because z is equal to r, right? So using that, I managed to cough up my parameterization as being r cosine theta, r sine theta for my point in the plane, and then how high up do I go? I go r. So this is basically the, the polar version of x, y, f, x, y, parameterizing it as, as the graph of a function, right? And I guess I should specify this is, this is good for uh, r between 0 and 2, 
and for theta between uh, 0 and 2 pi. All right, that'll give you my surface. Cool. Okay, so now I'm going to need to get the curl of f and the normal vector and all that junk. So let's see. So this is going to take some cross products. So sigma r cross sigma theta, I'm going to need my area element. Um, that's going to be, let's see. So I take the partial with respect to r and get cosine theta sine theta 1. And then the partial with respect to theta and get minus r sine theta r cosine theta 0. And that's my i column and my j column and my k column, bam, bam, with the bars. And we've got, let's see, multiplying it out, minus r cosine theta for the first coordinate, and then minus r sine theta for the second coordinate, and then r. All right, so the magnitude of this puppy, whoop, uh, that's not u, that's partial with respect to r partial with respect to theta, absolute values. And so we take the first coordinate, r squared, cosine squared, theta, and the second coordinate, r squared, sine squared, theta, and the third coordinate, r squared, and take the square root. And you can see that we can bring those r squareds out as an r. And then I'm gonna have cosine squared plus sine squared, which is gonna be a one. So I'm going to end up with a 1 there, and there was a 1 here. So I end up with, it just poof, cancels down to r root 2. That's pretty slick. All right. So, um, and that kind of makes sense, right? Can you see what the uh, r root 2 looks like? So at a, at a given point, it's going to be, um, let's see, something like that. So, okay, so let's do, um, okay, now we need the curl of F. So the curl of F is going to be, and this also is computed by cross product. So we've got uh, ddx, ddy, ddz, and we are components of F are x squared minus, uh, sorry, y squared minus y, 4z, and x squared, and we've got i hat, j hat, k hat, and we compute the partials and work them out, and we get minus 4 and minus 2x and 1. All right, and what else do I need? Oh, the normal vector. Sorry, yeah, I, um, whoops, what was it? I, I drew the normal vector back before, here, I'm going to delete it. We'll come back, check it in just a second. Um, sorry, 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 getting ahead of myself. So we've got uh, r derivative cross theta derivative over magnitude of same. Um, so that's going to be 1 over r root 2. Uh, and then multiplied against uh, minus r cos theta minus r sine theta r. And when the dust settles, we have uh, 1 over root 2 uh, minus cosine theta minus sine theta um, 1. Okay. And let's see now. So now we're going to use uh, Stokes theorem. And so we have that the circulation integral is by Stokes theorem equal to the double integral over s of curl f dot d sigma which is going to be the integral over s of curl and notice by the way that I am not putting a circle around here because um, this this is not a, a closed surface it has a boundary so it wouldn't make sense to do that um, so that we've got curl f dot n ds, um, which is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi according to our parameterization and 0 to 2. So that's our theta and our r domains. And then when we do the uh, dot product of 
this guy and this guy and put it down here. Um, let's see, so I've got one over root two and four cosine theta plus r sine two theta plus one. I use a trig identity there. And then we've got root two r dr d theta from our ds. And so some root twos cancel. And let's see what else I can pull out. Um, I can pull apart the integral. And so we've got four times integral zero to two pi of cosine theta d theta times the integral from zero to two of r dr. And this one is headed for death because it's a trig function across its period interval. The other integral, meanwhile, is zero to two pi. Mm, and let's see, so we've got sine of two theta, and then we've got zero to two r squared dr. This guy also headed for death. Uh, and the only survivor is the part from the constant term, so two pi, and then we have the integral of r is gonna be r squared over two. Zero to two gives us four pi, like it should. Okay, and so at some point you might be saying cone. Why the heck did you do the cone? Why, why couldn't you have done something other than the cone? And the answer is, yeah, I, I could have done anything other than the cone. I could have done anything that had the property. You just need it to be the case that the um, boundary of the surface you choose is equal to that curve that you started with. So that gives lots of freedom. And maybe you think at this point back to another case, like, hey, when did we have the freedom to choose any sort of intermediary that we liked in order to evaluate an integral? And if your mind jumps up in front of you and says, hey, I remember that from the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, line integrals. It's, it said that when you do a line integral of a gradient, then it doesn't matter how you get from A to B. The integral of a gradient vector field is, is path independent. Well, guess what? The integral of a curl field is also well, I'm not going to say path independent because now we're in two dimensions, but it's surface independent. It doesn't matter how you connect the surface between the parts of the boundary. It's going to be independent of that because it's a curl field.